Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be talking about something I haven't touched base on much at all and I think it's actually a, a really important point to cover today and today we're going to be talking about yesterday's closing price. Now just to review, my focus is one hour. One hour either in London, one hour in New York. Now obviously uh, we talked about the timing window. Uh, again, 8 to 11 a.m., sorry, 8 to 11 p.m. for Asia. I don't very rarely, if I ever, trade Asia now. Uh, 2 to 5 a.m. for London, and that's New York Eastern Standard Time, and then 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, specifically for London and New York, the equity hour, the market, the stock market opening hours, the, you know, whatever, futures exchanges, all those different things, roughly, but New York opening time, 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. And if you're... Writing this down, just review all the other videos. I cover the timings in detail. And for London, uh, that's 3 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Critical. I'm focusing on one hour in that session. I'm not trading in the other times. I've talked about uh, gap trades and different things, and there are times when there are trades there that I will take. But for the most part, uh, my focus is one hour a day, uh, either in both sessions, so obviously that's two hours. You're not trading. You're there in a three-hour window, but I'm looking for one trade setup. We'll talk about an example of that. But again, uh, using daily charts to form a thesis for the you know high probability timings, beginning, end, and middle of the month, and also to have a bias if you're in a, in a trend uh, month that's trending, maybe a sideways range. Uh, the weekly template, and we're going to talk a bit about that today with the yesterday's close. Critical to understand the importance of looking at the closing price. And then, obviously, is it an up day or down day? Best trade setups, one, two, threes, M's and W's, three-day setups, pump and dumps, and basically your, your trend trades, reversal trades, trading ranges. And again, we've covered these. We're going to go in more depth into these trade setups, entries, exits, risk management. We've talked about psychology. Um, you know, people, uh, I think, confuse that trading is, is uh, there's two types of trading, I suppose. And, and there's hands-off sort of trading. You can use uh, algos, you know, expert advisors, all that sort of stuff. And there's pros and cons to that method. You can be discretionary or mechanical. Uh, mechanical having a real cut and dry system uh, that you just execute uh, and there's obviously pros and cons with that system my approach to trading is I suppose you could call uh, aggressive when it's time to be aggressive and a scalp uh, all the rest you know scalp <laughs> uh, size the best and scalp the rest so you know these setups that I'm looking at are to keep me away from the screen be out of the market uh, I'm not looking to hold on to stuff over three, four days or two months, whatever that may be. I want to be in the market when my edge presents and be out of the market taking in taking profits. Uh, I have learned a lot of lessons the very, 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 very hard way. So when people say, oh, can you do this and can you do that? And look, you got to sit down and do the work. You will never, ever succeed trading um day trading unless you do the work this is a performance profession you, you just like a professional athlete you get paid to perform nobody's going to be able to show you they can show you things i can show you everything to do and you still will do different things you'll you'll make mistakes you're going to do things that are damaging you're going to do things that aren't in your trading plan you're going to uh, take too much risk on. You're going to be trading outside of high probability times when algos are running in the markets and high frequency trading systems. You're going to do crazy, crazy things. And I've had so much pain in the learning process that it took a lot, a lot of hard rewiring to train myself and to figure out what I knew worked and that fit with my approach to the markets. So anyways, today we're going to be talking about the importance of yesterday's close. So beginning of the week, I want to look at a couple things right away. Uh, obviously, we'll look at the euro. It doesn't matter what pair. It's important just to understand the psychology behind the closing price. Closing price. Somebody has shorted it at the close or on the open of the new day. That closing price can give us a reference point if a trader is underwater 
if their trade is in profit, if they're trapped right away, so they, they see a short on a longer time frame, they uh, get, you know, they're in the market right away, they just get in and bang, they're underwater right away, or they're in the money right away. In this particular case, we could see that Monday, the market proceeded to auction low, lower. And they took out Friday's low, triggered breakout traders on the daily, new day, maybe shorter time frame traders, 15 minute, half hour, hourly, four hour, whatever that may be, but breakout traders are in the market. The trader who's short at the close, the closing price is holding. They come back in the U.S. session and tap that price. If they've not locked in profits or they're at break even, they get stopped out. And the market, again, closes lower. But on that Friday, we had a market that opened high and closed low. That's a trend day. And that's what we want to look for for our three-day setups. But the beginning of the new week, the template starts again. We could we see a nice big W. We could potentially be putting in a low of the week. But this is where watching the closing price is critical. The market still closed as a down day below Friday's low and below Friday's close. On Tuesday, however, though, if you shorted the market at the close or you were in at the open for a short or you shorted it in Asia, bang, right away in Europe, you're underwater. And also, traders who were short the breakout of Friday's low were underwater. And then the market eventually layers on top of that Friday's low before hitting stops, triggering shorts, and pulling back and going vertical, hitting stops on the high of Monday, as well as the high of the day on Tuesday, but also uh, clearing out lower level shorts from the U.S. session on Friday. And we also have a close now that gives us our first green day. It closes higher than the open. And we're above Friday's low. So this is a good example of them flipping the book possibly. Monday, Tuesday gives us our initial balance. Our 80% of the time, one of these extremes will hold possibly for the higher low of the week. In a bull market, typically Monday's close will, Monday's close will close high in a bull market. And Monday, even though they can trade back inside of Monday's range, M Tuesday will typically trade higher, but they'll put heat into the, the closing price, but the low of Monday can hold. Not always, but it can hold. But if it doesn't hold, it still gives us information in a bull market. And we'll look at an example on gold. We have our first green day. The market pulls up right away and layers inside of that closing price before breaking out and trending on the Wednesday. We now have a day that opens low and closes high. So just coming back to understanding what you can use this information every day if you're scalping, and you can also use it for your three-day setup and looking for your level three trade opportunities. And if you're selling down low, be aware that you're possibly going to get caught at the low of the week. They trigger breakout traders first and they're going to trap volume down low before shifting the market, and they may be sitting there for the rest of the week. They may not come back at all. They might come back. I have no idea. But if you're shorting down low, be aware you could get a nice trade in, in Europe, but you're shorting it down into the low of the week. You want to be taking your money and getting out. The market closes above these shorts, but below, uh, sorry, above the lows of the day. Closes as a red day, which again triggers Maybe new traders into the market the next day, scans, indicators are all trending down, all that sort of stuff, and then boom, the market reverses on Tuesday, trends on Wednesday, and closes near the high of the day. This is a trend day, same as we saw on the Friday, a trend day down, trend day back up, closing near the high of the day. Our closing price, you'll notice right away, they drop away. Go down and put a low in place, but they don't let this trader have any positive equity. Trade is negative the entire time. I'm sure we can all relate to that where we've been in trade setups where you get in and immediately you're down money and it never comes back. They stay down there. They pin up real quick in Europe. They stay down there until the uh, Euro News release where they go vertical, bang, hit stops, trigger breakout traders. Uh, they go up there in 15 minutes. Then we have US session CPI, bang, they hit the high one more time, which on a shorter time frame, there was a great a sell opportunity up there on the euro. We'll look at that in our pump and dump video. But three, 45 minutes later, we're back underneath of the closing price. 
This is an opportunity level three, high of the day, high of the week for the sell. Traders are trapped. All this volume now from that closing price is trapped. And coming down all the way down through the low of the day, all these traders are trapped now if they're long, underwater, and we've still stayed underneath of there. Closed as a down day. First red day after our big trend day. Triggered breakouts. We have a peak formation possibly in place. Uh, we may have another down day. Not a trend re trade recommendation, just suggesting that currently the traders who are short are underwater still. But we may have a peak formation having been put in place. So obviously the low of the day will be critical to watch. If we're trading the euro, well, we may have a high of the day in place which if this holds, we have our high bull area up here in double zeros after locking in a peak formation. So this next level neckline to 50 could be an area to watch if we see this roll over. No idea what it's going to do. We have news tonight. Uh, but as the day unfolds, obviously, we could have a U.S. session opportunity set up for either a continuation down or a market returning back up inside of this peak formation. But the closing price as we watch that evolve through the week, can give us information of who's caught, who's underwater, and as the market trades over the course of the day, a thesis heading into each session, if there's an opportunity, or over the course of our three-day setup, looking for our trend day for our level three trade setup. Canadian dollar gave us a great example of a level three trade. We had Friday's close inside of the range so not a full trend day, but an up day after uh, you scroll back, we had a two days up. They've opened inside an auction down and put a low of the day in first before reversing. So you'll notice we're inside of the high and low of Friday, but also inside of the high of the week. They auction down first. They go down first and possibly lock in a low. They do that. They come back up in the U.S. and break above the Asian high and the high of London and they trend into the close. We have a, a day now that could be considered a trending day in an up market. Day one. That's a day one runner. It's, it's trended on day one. Consolidates in Asia before breaking the highs again, trading sideways and continuing to go higher day two. This pullback, this W formation near the high is critical to watch and pay attention to. We have our closing price that forms possibly a low locking in the quarter level trapping volume up high we have our closing price right away again they auction down in Asia so traders who are long at the close or in the open of Asia on the, the new swing are caught and they're not showing any profit we have a lower low or a new low of the day and the market goes sideways into the Europe open at level three, we're three levels of rise up at the quarter level above double zeros before dropping away. Boom, almost 75 pips from top to bottom and then going into consolidation. Yesterday was an, a second day trade opportunity as the day evolved. So again, they trigger breakouts right away at the beginning of the day, trigger shorts in a down market. The market's closed as a big red day, a downtrend day. And the market stays on top of that, putting in a peak formation high in the Asian session. People say, what's a peak formation high? That's basically when a market goes vertical and reverses, giving us a peak formation, same as it did over here. We have a little bull candle at the high that we can use as our high bull. And then you'll notice London trades back up into the high, giving us an M formation in the gap time. So if you're not trading this, which I'm not, and the market drops down, we know now the market has already possibly locked in the high in a downward moving market coming off a of level three for a possible second day trade. It breaks down in the first hour of the U.S. session. Major round numbers, double zeros. And comes back up, one, two, three, New York open to resume the downward move. Uh, what's going to happen today? I have no idea. We could still possibly see this market roll over. We have space underneath back to the low of the week. It may form a low on top of yesterday's close. We have a gap underneath from uh, the move back down to Monday's low. Currently, 
up above the closing price. The closing price, although it closed as a down day, is underwater. They may have put a peak formation low in. I would watch this if it rolls over and breaks down. This could be a good short coming down, not a trade recommendation. But currently the trader who is short end of day and into the Asian market, the new day, if they're short, they're underwater. Closing price can tell us a lot about what's happening. Again, coming back to tying this in as the day evolves, timing the specific windows in London and New York, looking at the high and the low of the day, understanding who's caught, if they've locked in a high or a low, weekly template, best trade setups, and then looking to see what scenario presents and using yesterday's close, day one, day two, day three, to identify our best trade setups. Just look at oil um, just briefly before I finish, just to give you an idea of a great level three opportunity. This same thing occurred on gold. The closing price, this is a you know, bull market. We had a red day on Monday, which isn't really a red day. It, opened, it closed below the open, but this big gap is a burst candle, which essentially is a bull candle to me. So it's, it's still a green day, but we had a bull market in oil. They come, somebody's gone along in the close. They immediately go down, put a peak formation in place or short one or the other. They short this possibly, but bang, they come right back above the closing price, which again, our reference point could be double zeros. And that closing price becomes a line of support for the remainder of the entire day. And there's a great example of Asia, London, New York, a one, two, three high of the day, high of the week, high of the month opportunity, putting an M formation in place. So they come back down and they hit the low of the day, the low of the London day, and then they go vertical again. And there's an example of them supporting or putting in higher lows into the new day and closing as a bull candle. The next day, peak formation layering on top of the bull candle, higher high, triple top. Again, we're coming to the screen later, letting the market set up. So people go, this is all hindsight trading. I'm not trading this stuff. I'm coming later. Why would, you know, oil's going to move, but New York, it's going to move even more. It, it, this is the level three. It can move in London. Uh, look at look what it did. It came below the closing price. London opened up and rolled over. This is a pump and dump from the first hour of London. It rolled over, broke down, breaks down through Monday Monday's closing price, breaks down, London pulls back, and boom, goes vertical, and then closes near the low of the session. Yesterday, Traders short this big day down, shorted in Asia, looking for follow through maybe. But then the market puts in a low and goes higher, puts a new high of the day in place. These are 250 pip boxes. Again, we had news last night on, on uh, this is a great one. People say, what's a one, two, three? That's a one, two, three right there on the 15 minute. But on the one minute, this gave a nice triple top uh, rectangular pattern right at the high. At the high of the day, again, we had U.S. News 15 minutes up. They held it up there, pulled back one, two, three, engulfments right at the high of the day at the beginning of the second hour of New York. They drop it down, pull it back up. The equity market opens and pops up, engulfment, and continues to fall. That was over a 500 pip move. But we're talking about closing price. So all day, for the most part, this trader after Asia is underwater, almost 500 pips. But the market then proceeded to come down through the session and close down near the low. They popped it up right at the beginning of the day. They've triggered the previous day's low. So currently, uh, end of day traders are sort of sitting negative to slightly uh, neutral, somewhere in this 106 area. Uh, Thursday's, sorry, Wednesday's traders who are short are somewhat in the money, but this reference point, the double zeros, can still be important. They might come back up there for a second tap. We have traders who shorted it down there last night. But we have day one, day two, day three up. Day one, day two, day three up. M pattern, vertical move, pullback. Shorts still in the market. Uh, it's possible we could see them retest. Again, not a trade recommendation. Retest the breakout 
of last Tuesday. Breakout traders who are in the market have a gap there on the daily charts, which is 500 pips down to that low. No idea what they're going to do, but I will be watching this to see how this evolves over Asia, London, and into New York. This could be an opportunity for a sell. Uh, they may put in a low and auction back up and just close this as a first red day, or sorry, a first green day in a downward market. It means Monday could possibly be a big day, but we'll watch and see how that sets up. Currently, shorts in the market, and whoever shorted yesterday's uh, session is sort of sitting neutral. They may have a peak formation already in place. Time will tell. Yesterday's close can give us a ton of great information. Hopefully, you got value from today's video traders. Stay disciplined, stay focused. It's been a, a huge week. Uh, for several traders, thanks for a lot of great feedback. Finish the week strong and may the markets go. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.